What is happening y'all? Cowboy here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the legendary armaments in Elden Ring. Now there are nine legendary armaments throughout the game, and these weapons generally have very unique effects, but more importantly, you need all nine to get the armaments trophy. So we're going to be talking about each of the weapons, showing the lore behind it, and showing the location. And to start, our very first weapon is the Grafted Blade Greatsword. And this one's pretty easy to get, it's right down in Castle Morn. Uh, what's nice about this is it has Sacred Oath basically baked into it along with a poison increase. So, pretty simple weapon art. You can see it goes up real fast. You can see I have a bunch of different little buffs active now. Um, pretty standard Colossal Greatsword moveset. I haven't actually had a chance to work with this one myself, but I know a lot of people that have been using it and they are very fond of it. Now this one's very straightforward. It's right down here in Castle Morn. As you make your way through the castle, at the very end, there'll be a boss fight right here. You beat this boss and you will get access to it. Moving on to our second weapon in the showcase, we have the Sword of Night and Flame. And this one's rather unique in that we need a 24 int and faith requirement to be able to use it, uh, but really nice with the unique skill here because we were able to cast two different weapon arts basically. We have the Night Comet or we have the Burst of Flames depending if we do a normal or a strong attack. So the weapon has the base longsword moveset, which is pretty straightforward. And once we get into the ready stance, we got our uh, laser blast or our flame sweep. So definitely a really interesting one for those going for a uh, dual split on those stats. And this one is going to be up north at the Caria Manor location. Now what you're going to want to do is start from the manor lower level. And this one's actually pretty easy to grab once you get to it, but we're still going to run there. In general, if one of these come from a boss, we're just going to show that boss location, like I did with Morn. Uh, if it's one that you actually have to run to, we will run on over and show you exactly where to go so you don't get lost. But for this one, we're just going to run down this pathway, make a left. And then we're going to make a right over here, and we're going to drop on down. You can kind of already see it. There's that structure right there. That's where we're trying to get to. There on our left. So once you get there, go this way and you drop again. Ooh, that would have sucked if I hit the hole. But go down this ladder and there will be a chest and right in, in there you will get your sword. Uh, so moving on from there, the next up is the Ruins Greatsword. Now this one initially I thought you could get locked out of, but it turns out that uh, you can't. So you're safe on this one. Uh, but this one comes from a boss fight here in Redon Castle. Now, depending on your progression in the story, when you first come here, there will either be a boss fight that you can do right in this area, or if you've already triggered the Festival of the Stars, you'll have the Radom boss battle. If the Radom boss battle has already been triggered, after that is done, you'll find the NPC right up there, like that little doorway above my head. Talk to him, and this will revert to its initial state, and you'll be able to go in and do this boss fight to get the sword. And this one's pretty beefy. It is another... Uh, another colossal, as you can see, even heavier than the last one. Uh, 50 strength and 16 int, so definitely some very unique requirements. Pretty standard moveset. This one has a weapon art where we do a big old slam, causing gravity to come on down. There's the description on it. This one. Definitely one I'm interested in trying out myself uh, on a strength playthrough, because that weapon art looks like it could do a lot of work. Uh, moving on to our fourth, though, the Marius Executioner Sword. Now this one's pretty straightforward. You're just going to get it from the Shaded Castle. Um, gotta be honest, wasn't too fond of this one. I played with it a little bit in my own playthrough, just to show the Shaded Castle. That's right over here between the uh, Gelmir region and the Altus Plateau. You just go on into the Shaded Castle and pick this up. It has a pretty standard greatsword moveset, same as you'd have on like the Claymore, but with the unique art of being able to throw that on out and then come back and do a sweep. You can also do a faster version of it. But I tried this one out in PvP with some friends and in PvE, and the damage just didn't feel that good on it. I mean, here's an enemy right here. Let's let's do it on this guy. This is a pretty basic enemy. And I, I was really surprised, because when I respect to an arcane build, I figured I'd try this out. Uh, so I'm guessing maybe you just need a bigger strength focus, but... It's the uncharged version. But I mean... That's, that's at plus nine, too. So this thing is upgraded, so I don't know. Personally, I don't think that's very good. I feel like, uh, you know, compared to some of the other ones, which now I'm kind of, well, the other ones aren't upgraded, so there's really no point in, in taking a look at them. Uh, but anyway, moving on from there, we have everybody's iconic favorite weapon, 
the Dark Moon Greatsword. Now, it used to be Moonlight, now it is known as Dark Moon, but it is just as cool as it's ever been, and now it also has Frostbite built on in. So, unique skill, Moonlight Greatsword, raise the sword bathing in the light, increase magic attack power, and blue the frost, charge attacks, release blast of moonlight. So, this one, also the standard moveset of a uh, typical greatsword, but once you charge it... Now we have bonus frost, and all of our heavy attacks will do those blasts, and this will stay charged for a good bit. You can see we're able to do charge version of it as well. And this one's going to be a little bit tricky to get. So as far as I know in terms of the bare minimum requirements, after you have triggered the Radon fight that happens here and you've beaten him, you then want to go over here just west of Fort Height, and you'll be able to go on down into Nakron. Once you get into Nakron, you need to work your way around, beat Mimic Tear, head on over this way, hit Ancestral Woods from here, jump onto the rooftops, navigate your way through Night's Sacred Ground to get a key item. You're then going to take that secret item back on over to Rani. Um, you access her after you have cleared Carrier Manor. I would in fact go talk to her before you head on down into Nakron. Some people have said you don't have to, but anyway, you'll want to talk to Rani. After you give her that key item, she is going to basically go to sleep uh, or rest, you know, whatever the case is. From there, you need to go to Rena's Rise. This is going to give you another teleporter that will then warp you on down into another underground area called Noxtella. Once you're here, there is a doll on the ground. You'll want to talk to that doll multiple times until its dialogue opens up. After that point, uh, she will then have you go through the city, and as you progress through, you'll hit Waterfall Basin. Going down from that, you'll be invaded by something called the Baleful Assassin right here. After you have defeated the Baleful Assassin, you can then take a key that was dropped from him, and you can go on over to the Rea Lucaria Grand Library and open a chest that is next to Renala, who is Ronnie's mother. Uh, that will give you the Dark Moon Princess Ring. Once you have that, you can continue. I mean, you don't need it at, the, at that point, but anyway, um, you're going to need that. Proceed through the Lake of Rot. You'll reach the Grand Cloister. Right down here, you will find a coffin that you can climb into. That coffin will bring you on over here to Estelle Natural Born of the Void. After you beat this boss, there will be a wall right here, and that wall will vanish if you have that ring on you. Then you go on into here for an elevator. That will bring you up uh, to this area in southwest Liernia, and then from there you make your way over to the cathedral, put the ring on the finger of the doll, run through some dialogue, and then you will have Dark Moon Greatsword waiting for you. So this is definitely the most complicated uh, of the unlockables. I actually have a whole video just dedicated to this one because of how complicated it gets. Now for our sixth legendary armament, we have the Bolt of Grand Six. Now I can confirm that this one is in fact missable. Uh, if you have progressed the game to the point where you need to burn the Erd Tree, you will not be able to get access to this one, to, so definitely make sure you get this in advance. Uh, I actually just sprinted all the way through New Game Plus to get up to get this for this showcase. Uh, but a great Ancient Dragon, Grand Six One Range Calamity. Uh, this is a spear from him. It has Ancient Lightning Spear. We can charge it up to increase the attack power and throw the spear. Physical Lightning Split, DD Scaling, 20 Strength, 40 Dex. So definitely a pretty cool one. As fast as that goes, I'm honestly kind of curious, uh, you know, whether people can really dodge that that well in PvP. Uh, but to get this one, we're going to start from the Erd Tree Sanctuary Grace. This is the grace after you have uh, defeated uh, Godfrey, First Golden Lord. But head on out here. I'm going to head on over here. I'm going to take this elevator down. The good thing about getting this one is I learned just how fast you can speed run through the game. We're going to go on down this way, and right over there you can see a big spear, and that is where we're going to find this thing. It's just a little miniature replica of the spear. So right around here you can see there's some ledges below us, and this little break is a good spot, so jump right there. And then from there, just jump on top of the spear. Now I found that the spear can be a little bit slippery when you're climbing it, so just take your time. And then right here, you will find the spear. 
So our seventh one is going to be the Eclipse Shotel. And this one's pretty easy to get. It's going to be up at Castle Soul. So as you fight your way through that area, you'll pick this one on up. Uh, definitely pretty interesting weapon because it has death built on into it. Unfortunately, the death ailment does not affect PvE content at all. So this would strictly be a PvE weapon. Uh, but looking at the stats, you can see split scaling there. And then you can buff the weapon and slam it down to create a death flame. And after that, it is marked with death. So I will say one of the nice things about this is shoals in general usually go through shields. So I think this could be a pretty cheeky weapon in PvP to hit people with. Um, nobody's going to get caught by this thing. That's just way too big of a wind up and way too small of an explosion. But enchanting the blade with death build up could certainly be interesting. Now moving on from there to our eighth one. This one there's some, some interesting conditions surrounding. So this is the Devourer Scepter. Uh, scepter. Shape of the Serpent Devouring the World. Unique skill devourer of worlds. Uh, this is basically just a big old Zug Sub Club. Just beat people with it. The weapon art causes a big AoE that will vacuum in life to heal you. Uh, in my testing, I feel like the damage wasn't all that high, but it wasn't upgraded. So this could still be nice just because of the fact that it's a, a big club that beats people that can also heal you. Now, there are a couple different ways to get this one. The first is going to be really early in the game, actually. At the Warmaster Shack, there's going to be an NPC. And you can kill this NPC, and he'll drop the Warmaster Scepter. However, that NPC has a quest line that continues after you reach the Volcano Manor. And you need to do his quest line if you want to get the Bloody Wolf armor that was in the closed network test and shown in all the promotional stuff. Uh, now, if you want to get the armor and you want to get the Scepter, what I did is I went through the whole Volcano Manor quest line. So that's a, that's a whole separate thing basically join the Volcano Manor, they're going to put marks on the map for different people that uh, you need to invade. After I had completed all of those invasions, I was then over in Faramazula, and from the Beside the Great Bridge area, I got invaded by him here. Now, I've heard conflicting reports about when this guy invades you, so I'm just going to point out where he invaded me. This is where I got the weapon. So from this area, instead of proceeding up there to the boss, you would go this way. Instead, you work your way around, and there's going to be a ladder. That ladder is going to bring you down right there, where that little bridge is at in that tower. And that's where he invaded me, and I got the scepter. Now, if that doesn't work, honestly, your best bet, if it's like the last thing you're missing to get this trophy, just wait for New Game Plus. Because once you get in New Game Plus, you know, you can just haul ass to the War Master Shack, kill the guy, get the weapon, and boom, you got your achievement. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. Just because killing him initially, you're going to miss out on some fun uh, Volcano Manor questline type stuff. And, you know, you don't want to miss out on stuff, obviously. Uh, now, the last one on our list is really cool. And this is the Golden Order Greatsword. Very much the iconic weapon of the game, in a sense. As you can see, modeled after the Elden Ring itself. Establish order, raise the armament in a salute, releasing a golden explosion. So definitely a, a pretty unique weapon with a pretty unique weapon art. Big old combo where we fire out a wave of light. And this one, you're going to need the Hallow Tree region unlocked. To get this, you get one half the key at Castle Soul. You get the other half of the key uh, down here in the village of the Alvinurix by talking to the guy that's hidden. And once you go on up here, there is a cave right here that's Cave of the Forlorn. Now, I've had a couple people going in here and, and getting stuck because they can see the area below, but they can't figure out how to get to it. Uh, once you get into the cave, there's going to be some ice schools that you're going to need to climb up to continue proceeding through this. So if you get stuck, just look for areas to climb, and you like climb and joke armor some stuff, and then you make your way back down. Uh, but fighting through that and getting to the end will award you with the ninth and final weapon needed for the Legendary Armaments achievement. So that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, I'm still trying to hunt down the location of the legendary spells and incantations. Uh, that one, I, I don't know. When I find them, I'll probably do a video on it. But either way, we're going to wrap things up here. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you all next time.